Good morning. It's good to have everyone here. We're going to open our Bibles and turn to the book of Revelation chapter 4. And I, you should have everything that I'm speaking in your notes today. Um, I want to talk to you about worship and about the lack of worship in the church. Um, many times we can get, uh, we can forget that our first love is with Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I read an article by a uh, man who uh, used to be president of Broadman Press, uh, Thomas Rayner. Um, and uh, I also read an article about uh, from another man that is a pastor of a mega church in America, the largest Maranatha church in America. Maranatha would be, I guess, a non-denominational church. Uh, and he was talking about how in ministry and the busyness of life and ministry, he had forgotten his first love. He had forgotten the ability to uh, just worship Jesus. And I, I began to think about that. And it's just not ministers that struggle with this, but it's people of all kinds of ages and, uh, and careers and education. Because, you know, busyness is something that the devil will bring against us to keep us from having an intimacy with the Heavenly Father. Uh, we sang the song this morning. All the songs were perfectly picked. And Vernon, thank you. God, the Holy Spirit gives you those songs because he knows what he's laid on my heart to share with you. Uh, and so uh, near to the heart of God, that is God's purpose for us. Uh, that is where our power source comes from. Amen. That is where we must be in a, in a daily walk with the Lord. So let's pick it up in Revelation chapter four. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven and first voice, which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. That first verse is an amazing verse because the Hebrew meaning of number four in Hebrew. Now remember, the Hebrew language has no numbers like we have in our language. Each letter in the Hebrew alphabet uh, number corresponds with that. And the let is the fourth number of the Hebrew alphabet. And the fourth number represents an open door. It is a picture when you see the letter Dalet in Hebrew, it looks like a door, okay? And it has to do with seasons, uh, with the seasons, God's seasons, which are his feast days, which are uh, Passover, Pentecost, and tabernacles. It has to do with seasons of life. It has to do with seasons of, of the equinox, of, uh, you know, summer, fall, winter, and spring. And for is that number that represents an open door, okay? So watch this. So we're looking at Revelation chapter four and John sees a door. Is that not amazing? Standing open in heaven, meaning an invitation to, uh, to come up and see, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Verse two, immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper, a sardis stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads and from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal and the midst of the throne and the throne the and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. 
The first living creature was a lion. The second living creature was calf. The third living creature had the face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like flying eagle. The fourth living, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying. So they worship 24-7. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Verse 9, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for your created all things and by your will they have existed and were created. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Now that's a powerful passage of a vision that John, the apostle, had with Jesus showing him what was going on in heaven. Okay? So this is, this is what I would call throne room kind of worship. Would you agree? That's what's going on in the throne room. And by the way, I'm going to give an advertisement starting this next Friday at 10 o'clock. We're going to begin studying revelations in the Bible study. Okay. And it's going to be awesome. And if you want to know about revelations, we're going to go verse by verse expository. And we're going to, we're going to look and see what God is saying. Amen. So I want to share that with you. So this is amazing. Now, this week was very, was a rough week. There was a lot of testing in our lives. We were attacked on every level of our lives. We were attacked financially. We were attacked uh, with uh, our computer. I woke up Monday morning and the computer uh, locked down and wouldn't, I could not use it. I use it for ministry. I use it for writing. I use it for business, uh, all those things. And I was on the phone with Microsoft Long story short, after two, two and a half hours, they finally straightened out and there was a virus that had gotten in it. It was called Spy Eye Trojan and it was listening to everything we were saying on our smart TV, on our, our, on our uh, 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 phone, cell phones, and on our computer. I have a laptop. Every key punch I was making on my computer, they were, they were noting it. They were following. They had invaded our personal business ministry life okay and then we got attacked uh that was identity theft and we got attacked uh against uh, our character and 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 just uh, it was just a week of attacks and debbie and i did the first thing we did is what the first thing we did is we got on our knees and we began to cry out to god mercy 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 we need mercy, God. You see what the enemy is doing to try to defeat us, discourage us. You see how the enemy wants to take us out, but we're not going to allow that. We're going to turn to you and we're going to worship you and we're going to worship you in the throne room like Revelation chapter four speaks about. So I walk two miles a day or I try to, not every day do I get to do it, but it, but I try to do it at least five days a week, two miles a day. And when I walk, I pray. How many know how that is? Okay. And so um, I was praying and the Lord uh, about all this. And the Lord said to me, do you want to, do you want to know how to, how to have an intimate worship in the throne room with me? He said, remember Revelation chapter four? I said, yes, holy, holy, holy. He said, yes. So you begin to praise and you begin to worship. We enter his courts with thanksgiving and we, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with what? With praise, okay? He said, you begin to, you begin to worship me holy, holy, holy. And I began to see that Lord God Almighty who was and is to come. And then I began to think of all the ways that God is holy in my life. And I've listed some of them on the back of your notes on the second page. Uh, do you think about this? God has many faces, many faces as he relates to us through Jesus Christ, his son. So I listed all those uh, faces of God. Elohim, 
He's our eternal creator. Adonai, he's our master. Jireh, he's our provider. Nisi, he's our banner. Rapha, he's our healer. Shalom, he's our peace. Sitkanu, he's our righteousness. Sabaoth, he's the Lord of hosts. Shema, he's the Lord is present. Elo, Eli, Elion, he is the Lord most high. Rohi, he is our shepherd. The Lord, our shepherd. Hosinu, the Lord, our maker. Elohinu, the Lord, our God. Eloheka, the Lord your God. Elohe, the Lord my God. Hallelujah. Ha ha. I'm going to just encourage myself in the Lord. You read through that and you can pray through those and you begin to say, holy, holy, holy. You are Lord creator. You are my master. You have given us all things. You work everything out for my good. And you just begin to flow in the thoughts of the Holy Spirit as you worship the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. And then the Lord said, then after you do that, begin to say, worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is the lamb that was slain from foundation of the world. And that's that verse nine. And we see it here where the first part, the 24 elders, the four living creatures, all the saints that have gone to be with, with the Lord in heaven, our relatives, they're in the throne room worshiping God. And so they worship God first. And then the next thing is they worship the son. They worship the only begotten son. They worship Savior, our Lord, our Messiah. And that's when you begin to say, worthy, worthy, worthy. You created by the, the, the earth and the universe and what we know now in Genesis 1-1, by you spoke it into existence. You went to the cross for us. The, the sins of the world were laid upon you, uh, Lord. And so then you begin to worship Jesus. Okay, worthy. And that's what worthy, worthy, worthy is all about. And then you go from there. And the Lord said to me as I was walking, then you begin to cry out and worship him and praise him. Glory, glory, glory. And glory has to do with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have uh, shown Jesus into our hearts, that you revealed our need for Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have comforted us when we mourned. Thank you that when we had disappointment, when we had loss, when we had these things in life that we don't understand, Holy Spirit has drawn near to us. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Oh, glory, glory, glory. He's our comforter. He's our paraclete. He's our defense attorney. In the throne room of heaven, when the enemy comes against us, according to Revelation chapter 12, and he's accusing us, and he's saying, you did this and you did that, and he stands up, and the Holy Spirit, and says, Judge, Father God, I want to share something with you. I shined Jesus in their life back in 1948, and guess what? They are part of the blood-bought body of Jesus Christ. That accuser of the brethren doesn't have anything to say because Jesus paid the price for that penalty. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory, glory, glory. And so as I began to think about that and what happened to us this week, I began to think about all the different times in my life when I have grown lukewarm, when I have grown cold hearted because of life, because of disappointments, because of those things in life that keep us from drawing near to the heart of God. We cannot allow loss of loved ones, loss of spouse, jobs that we loved and careers that we have lost or been fired from, or the company just went bankrupt and we were left hanging, right? We, we, can't, we can't let transition of life keep us from drawing near to God and worshiping in the throne room. Transitions like moving to a senior living place, like having to give up your house and all your belongings and your driving and all the things that you had independence in. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in a place where you don't know anybody and you're, you're afraid and you're, you're bitter and you're angry and you're, you're trying to walk out this trans, the, this uh, 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 
trans, what's the word I want? Uh, trying to walk out the change. Transition. Transition, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. See, that's one of the things that happens to me. Since you all know, you prayed for me, since uh, four years ago, my brain aneurysm were only 1% live. I'm a one percenter. But what, one of the residuals of that is my brain won't fire when I'm talking and I all of a sudden go blank. And my wife has been around me long enough and she can finish the sentence. Hallelujah. Guess what? If she didn't come to church, I'd just be talking and drop a sentence and you would know where I was going from there, right? <laughs> Amen. Those kind of things can cause you to be bitter and angry and frustrated. And God doesn't want that. Satan does. He wants to keep us from the, from the intimacy with the Heavenly Father. So look what Revelation chapter 3. This is, the, this is letters, one of the letters that Jesus gave John to write to the churches in Asia Minor. Okay. He said this, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things say to, to these things say the amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know your works. Now he's speaking to the church at Laodicea. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish, I wish you were cold or hot. So then because of, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Oh, God, help us. Let us not ever be lukewarm. Let us be on fire for God. Let us have a love that is deeper than anything life throws our way. Let us love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and let us love our neighbor as ourself. On the first page, I put a scripture, or maybe not. Let me see. There it is. First John four seven says this says here: to know God is to love Him. Everyone who loveth is born of God and knoweth God. When there's not love in our lives, when there's not the love of Jesus, the love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, guess what? We need to look at our love meter. <laughs> We need to look at our love thermostat, our thermometer, you see, and we need to ask the Lord, touch me with your love again. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be spewed out of your mouth. Now, it reminds me of the remnant. Now, I've taught you this, that we are in the Jewish year or God's calendar in the year of Gideon, uh, the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Gedon, and that's what Gideon's name starts with, okay? And we know the story of Gideon. He went after the enemy with what? With 30,000. That was enough. Then 3,000. And remember the story? They went to the brook, and the ones who uh, drank the water with their face down uh, and weren't aware of anything else, he sent home and got to 300. Why do you do that? Well, in that story, you see, if we're so focused on the physical need and not seeing the spiritual realm of our life, we will get caught up in only seeing the physical need. Amen. Now, in this week, I had a dream. God speaks through dreams. Okay. And in the dream, I went to see an eye doctor. And he was going to do an exam on my eyes. And he said, everything looks okay, but come back tomorrow. I want to do some more tests and more extensive exams. Now, I'm blessed that I don't have to wear glasses. Uh, well, I do, but I choose not to. I'm blessed that I don't need reading glasses. I'm one of 5% of my age group in, in the world that doesn't need reading glasses. I, I, don't, I can see without reading glasses. I'm, one, I'm blessed with that, okay? But I have astigmatism and I can't see far away, so I wear a contact, one contact, in my right eye. And that's for seeing you that you're not blurred to me, okay? So that's good news, isn't it? So I can see as you've been seeing, right? 
And, and you know, people said, how does that work with your brain? I said, well, it's very simple. When you're close to me, I look you out of my left eye. And when you're far away from me, I see you out of my right eye. <laughs> but anyway, in the dream, I went back the next day and there were six interns and they didn't have a clue what they were doing. You could tell they didn't have a clue. The doctor had to tell them everything, do this, do that. And so one intern came to me and he said, I wanna, I wanna look in your eyes. And, and he said, oh, there's a contact in your left eye and something's wrong with it. I said, no, in the dream, I said, no, I wear a contact in my right eye. And he said, well, this contact's in the left eye. He said, let me see it. So he got it and he pulled it out. And on the curvature of the contact were many hairs growing out of it. Just, just nasty. And it was like, whoa, how do you even wear that? And then, guess what? There was a little worm crawling up one of those hairs and there was a spider coming out. And I killed the worm and I killed the spider and I woke up. Well, that morning when I was walking and the Lord talked to me about throne room worship of holy, 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 a worthy, 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 glory, glory, glory. I asked the Lord, what was that dream about? He said, that dream about was your left eye. Your left eye represents in, in spiritually, your left eye represents human, seeing things from a human perspective, trying to, it, it represents logic, try to logically uh, fix what is wrong in your life. How many, how many know sometimes you can't logically fix it? It's impossible with man. Things thought as impossible with man are not uh, impossible with God, right? And so, and I said, well, what about the worm? And God took me back to the Old Testament where what the canker worm and what the uh, 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 locusts have stolen, I will restore in Isaiah. It says, I will restore. So the Lord was saying to me, look, Jim, you're trying to figure all this out, what's happened to you this week. You're trying to figure that out humanly, how you can correct everything. He said, you can't. You have to see from your right eye, which is the eye where you can see spiritually. Give it to me and I will deal with it. I will take care of it. I will protect you. I will be with you. How do you handle? How would you handle? Every area of your life has been stolen from you by identity theft. Lock down all your finances. Lock down everything that you have. This is the kind of things that people deal with. I told some people the other day, uh, it looks like they have, uh, my father who's deceased, it looks like that his social security number has been, has been breached or stolen and people are buying houses on his social security number. I said, wow, I need to take his social security number and I'm going to try to buy a house. No, I didn't. You know, I'm having fun with you. But see, this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to rob, steal, and destroy you. Amen. So I'm almost finished here. So, so what God is saying is stop trying to figure it out in your life. How you're going to transition. How you're going to go from this season of life to another season of life. What is the future hold for you? You see, if we focus on that in logic and human, we will get tired, wore out, and we won't be intimate with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the last passage I want to share with you. Everybody say amen. amen. Say amen. That's the last passage. <laughs> the Lord took me to Song of Solomon. How many know the Song of Solomon? Have you read it before? It's called the Song of Songs. It's called the Song of Solomon. It is David's uh, son who became king and actually built the temple that God promised David. And by the way, let me just say this about David. David was, had two characteristics that God loved. And that's why he said, he's a man after my own heart. Number one, he was a warrior. He knew how to fight the good fight. He knew how to listen to God in throne room worship. And he knew that God was with him. How many times do we see when David and the armies of Israel went out to war and God provided a strategy and they were able to win the war? right? Secondly, he was a person of worship. We know the story of David. We know the, we know the wonderful Psalms that he wrote and many of them are worship. Most all of them have to do with worshiping in the throne room. 
You want to know how to worship in the throne room? Read the Psalms. Okay? So his son Solomon writes this in Solomon 3. By night on my bed I sought the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. I will rise now and said, and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I will seek the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. Now watch this. There are two types and shadows in those few verses. The first type and shadow is the bride of Christ seeking groom, Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We're the bride. He's the groom. The bride needs to be seeking after the groom, seeking to have an intimate relationship with him. Now, in this story, Song of Solomon wrote that in, in his own bed, he looked, uh, uh, the bride looked for the groom and could not find him. He says they then went out on the streets. That's, that's, that's the physical realm. Could not find him. Okay? Went on the streets and the squares. I will seek the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. You see, you could go to church every Sunday morning and still not have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. You can serve on an elder board or a deacon board. You can, you can operate in prophecy. You can operate in the uh, nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? That's our responsibility. That's not the pastor's responsibility. That's not the Sunday school teacher's responsibility. I'm preaching now, folks. I, I should be done real quick. So then we'll look at verse 3. The watchmen who go out about city found me. And I said, have you seen the one I love? Scarcely I had passed by them when I found the one I love. So he even went, uh, this, this, this Shulamite woman, which represents the bride of Christ. It also represents Israel that's looking for the father. How Israel was an adulterous nation. How they went after foreign gods and graven images, right? So it's, it's kind of has different layers of understanding of this passage. Look what it says in verse 4. Scarcely I passed by them when I found the one I love. I held him and would not let him go. <laughs> Come on, church. When you find Jesus, don't let him go. Don't let the world philosophy don't let the antichrist system, don't let the economics, don't let the politi politics keep you from holding on to the one you love, who died for you, your Savior, Messiah. Hallelujah. He said, I held him. She said, I held him and I would not let him go until I had brought, until I had brought him to the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. And so then goes on in that passage talking about the bedchamber in, in a relationship with the, the bride of Christ and Jesus the groom and Israel and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. You feel the weight of that? I do. I've missed it many times. I've missed it many times. I've allowed life to keep me from being intimate with the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. My challenge to you today is don't be like the world. Don't be like religion and church. Come on Sunday, hear a message and never get into the word themselves. Never pray, never until there's a crisis in their life and then they want to call on others to pray for them. It's time the church has an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. It's time that we be hot, not cold or lukewarm. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, may the words of the scriptures burn into our spirit. May we be reminded of throne room worship. Holy, holy, holy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for the remnant that's here today. And for those that would be here, but because of sickness and appointments can't be. 
Lord God. As we sang that song this morning, near to the heart of God, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Lord, in the seasons of our lives, we choose to draw near to you so that you will lead us on this earth and we might be counted because of our obedience by faith. We ask this in Yeshua, King Jesus' name. We ask this, Lord, through the name that is above all names, the name that is glorious, that is wonderful, that is mighty, that is everlasting, that is Prince of Peace, that is wonderful counselor, that the, 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 the governments will be upon his shoulder, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Take us, remind us, protect us, provide for us, persevere us, we pray. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Let's give God some praise in this house. Come on, he's worthy of our praise. Come on, praise God. Amen. Thanks for being here.